fourth place reclaimed. How much is there a feeling amongst the players? If we can keep this up, we can make Champions League football next season. I think we have a very strong belief in the group and uh, yeah, we play with a lot of confidence at the moment and we just have to keep going as we said many times, take it game by day, uh, game by game and keep improving and we'll see in the end but we're happy where we are at the moment. But with the games in hand Thomas, how much do you feel that your destiny is in your own hands? Well, I think uh, we have a couple of difficult games coming. Almost all the games are difficult. Uh, as Martin said, we have to go game by game. And that's the mentality of the team. We want to keep improving and that's our mentality now. How much does this momentum help you though? I think it helps a lot. I think we have a lot of confidence in the team now. I think everyone believes in what we're doing. And uh, yeah, as I said, we just have to keep going, keep improving and, uh, and we'll see where it takes us. Your job is as the defensive screen. You scored today. Perhaps could have had a couple. Well, I, 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 I feel happy. <laughs> I could score more, but uh, well, yeah, it's part of the game. Uh, it's good. Uh, I want to always help the team. And for me, uh, it feels good to score in our home. And I feel happy. And happy for the team also. You had to wait for VAR, but how convinced were you that it was handball? I was pretty sure, to be honest. Uh, I don't know who, but I just saw the ball touch <laughs> touch a hand, and I was pretty sure. So, yeah, um, I'm happy the referee decided the penalty, and uh, yeah, I win for us, so it's good. Tell us about your own game, because you look like you're really in the groove here now, in terms of not just carrying the ball, but also assists and passes. Nobody had more than you in the game today. Yeah, I think I'm in I'm in a good shape, but uh, I think it's all about the team, and the team is performing so well, and that it makes it easier for us players. Uh, you see Thomas and Granite, the job they do, and they make it so much more easy for me in the middle there. And uh, yeah, uh, we're strong as a team, and, and that's the most important thing. Then, then it's easier for everyone to, to shine. Thomas, as the defensive midfield screen, are you equally happy with the clean sheet today? Yeah, I feel very happy and, and happy for, for all the team. Uh, we, we work a lot during the week and at the end that's uh, you know, what we have to gain and we are happy with this and we have to continue improving. It was fabulous stuff today. Well done, guys. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, they're right to have belief, Glenn, this run that they're on, aren't they, these young players in the Arsenal squad? Without a doubt. And I think, ironically, that interview, those two, those two looked pretty average when they first arrived at Arsenal. I don't know if you'd agree, lads, but for me, they looked OK, not too bad, but they've now got their feet under the table and they're now playing at their very best. The balance between them two players is perfect for midfield, for me. Whoever goes in there and plays with them, at the moment it was Xhaka, but it, it could be anyone else. But those two, they've got a lovely balance. You know, and I think uh, I think um, Partey now is screening that he's got. He knows his job. I think he was trying to do everything when he first arrived. He wanted to be a goal scorer and get in the box. He wanted to get back and defend as well. Now they're saying that that's your role in the team, and that Odegaard then can go and play where he's going to hurt other teams. As I say, I think I look at him now. He can't wait for the next game. I don't care who it is. He's saying, "Give me the ball," and that. And when you've got a midfield player like that, you're going to hurt teams. And uh, yeah, they've got that lovely balance in that, particularly in the midfield, I think. And for a long time, actually, nobody knew really what Arsenal's best team was. There was a lot of inconsistency, chopping and changing. But on this run, as I say, they've been on, the settled side is there for all to see. Yeah, and it makes a big difference, you know, in terms of the relationships that you develop on the pitch, and, you know, whether it's two centre-halves or right back and a right winger or whatever it is. Um, a settled side is, is always better and as you say it's clear that the players are playing good, they look like they've got a good balance, they look confident, like, like you say, they're enjoying their football, we, we was mentioning in the game, they just look like they, they can do anything, they've got so much confidence at the minute and that all comes from being a settled team uh, and having momentum with picking up points and wins and uh, not losing games. I think he's got a, a squad that he trusts now. Um... He needed one. He needed to make one or two changes. He needed one or two players out because, for different reasons, they weren't towing the where he wanted to go. He, he the squad needed trimming. Um, he needed other players in. That didn't happen. But he had to get players out. So everyone was 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 going in the same direction. And I think they've got a very good team spirit. Yes, they can improve. Yes, they need one or two more players. But they're a very young squad with average age, very, the youngest in the Premier League. So there's only one way Arsenal are going. Um, and if they can get into that top uh, four position come the end of the season and get two or three big hitters in, they could be dangerous next season. Mm. Yeah, just to back that up, in the last 11 games, he's only made <coughs> 10 changes in that period, Mikel Arteta. And Alan's right, he's got the youngest average starting 11. Well, that's the and they're fourth. That's the continuity that you want. And, and if you can come across as a manager, there's nothing better. If you've got so many games back to back, I don't think he could have done that if he had European football yeah, yeah. in the midweek. So he's been able to do that and have that continuity. That, that, 
that back four knows exactly what they're all doing. They're talking, they're communicating together, they're squeezing up together, the goal, they've got confidence in the goalkeeper. That's given them the basis, the base to go and play. Those youngsters now can go and play and express themselves. And they were, Martinelli, Odegaard, they're doing things now, you know, Smith Rowe when he comes on. They've got that, he's allowed them to go and play. You're good players going forward, but we, they didn't have a base. They didn't have that back four, and they didn't have now Party doing his job there. To then go and let these talented players play, he's, he's got that now. And I think Alan's absolutely spot on. There was a few apples in there he had to get rid of. And I think that settled everyone down. I mean, I don't know, I'm not privy to what's going on in that changing room. But I think that's been a massive plus. I think they do need another striker. Yeah. Lacazette is looking as if he might sign another contract at the end of the season. But I think they do need another one. They're going to... They're gonna, be in a position if they're in the top four to go and buy in a Champions League spot then you can go and buy what I call proper players. Mm. Getting back to today they certainly exploited a Leicester weakness which we've seen all season and isn't showing any signs of, of recovering from a Leicester point of view. Yeah well you're not going to win any games if you can't defend set pieces and it, and it happens over and over again with Leicester and I, I it, it's <laughs> we, you talk about this first goal this is after I think 11 minutes <clears throat> you've got Harvey Barnes Normally, that's your, your most aggressive header right in that position there. To go and head it, block people and clear the danger. He's fiddling with his shorts. You've got uh, Pereira doesn't want to know and you've got Thomas that runs underneath the ball. So you're already in trouble. Um, and, and this is a way at, the, uh, at Arsenal where you're thinking that if they carve you open and score a magnificent goal, then you hold your hands up and say, fair enough. But set pieces, you've got to defend them. And it's not the first time we've left them. I'm sure there must have been work done on the training pitch. Um, and it, I, it's just baffling and, and we're in the second half now so you think at half time that issue is going to be addressed because we've seen it um, <clears throat> and now we've got a free kick okay so it's not a corner same situation Harvey Barnes at the front doesn't this, deal with it this is where you want the, the defenders I just play. think they're too acute to the ball they're almost in line with the wall and you're in trouble if you're in that position they needed to just their starting position needed to be a little bit deeper and, and from where the ball's coming in, I think that's a If you're the taker, you're thinking, where's the space? There's a little bit of space there. The movement of Lacazette. Now, Harvey Barnes, again, it's his job is to stay in front. Look, he's got, he's got caught cold. He's tried to clear the ball out of the box rather than clearing it for a corner. An instinctive defender in that shield, in that first man, heads it away or clears it and tries to get it out of the danger area. There's the little, the t it's a now. It's not even a finger, a hand. It's probably his now, but it's handball. It's deemed handball because it's just touched Sion Chu's sort of tip of his finger. And I, for me, I'm just going to make a, a, a statement here. That's handball, yeah? The, the ball's actually touched his hand. Mm. But I don't understand how that can be a booking. That is not an intentional... Mm. If the rules are the rules, it doesn't have to be in a deliberate handball. That's not a deliberate handball. And I think a deliberate handball, yeah, you get booked. But I can't understand why he got booked as well. He has said star forward Harry Kane will be fit to face Burnley in the Premier League on Wednesday. The England captain was hit on the back during a superb two-goal effort in a stunning 3-2 win at Manchester City last weekend that saw the reigning champions lead at the top of the table cut to six points. Conti, during a pre-match news conference on Tuesday, joked Kane would play at Burnley's turf more ground even if he had one leg. Harry had a hit on his back, but he has to play. Even if he has one leg, he has to play, the Italian added. He is good, fit. He knows the importance he has to our team. Conti also said Oliver Skip and Jaffet Tanganga were still sidelined while Sergio Reguilon was doubtful for the match against relegation candidates Burnley following a recent bout of coronavirus. Skip and Tanganga are recovering. They're still not ready for the game against Burnley, explained Conti. Sergio Reguilon, in the training session yesterday, Monday, he wasn't present and we'll see today. We hope they can all recover soon. Despite beating City, Tottenham are eighth in the table and seven points adrift of a Champions League place, although they do have at least two games in hand on all the top four. Tottenham manager Antonio Conte has said star forward Harry Kane will be fit to face Burnley in the Premier League on Wednesday. The England captain was hit on the back during a superb two-goal effort in a stunning 3-2 win at Manchester City last weekend that saw the reigning champions lead at the top of the table cut to six points. Conte, during a pre-match news conference on Tuesday, 
joked Kane would play at Burnley's turf more ground even if he had one leg. Harry had a hit on his back, but he has to play. Even if he has one leg, he has to play, the Italian added. He is good, fit. He knows the importance he has to our team. Conti also said Oliver Skip and Jaffa Tanganga were still sidelined, while Sergio Reguilon was doubtful for the match against relegation candidates Burnley following a recent bout of coronavirus. Skip and Tanganga are recovering. They're still not ready for the game against Burnley, explained Conti. Sergio Reguilon, in the training session yesterday, Monday, he wasn't present and we'll see today. We hope they can all recover soon. Despite beating City, Tottenham are eighth in the table and seven points adrift of a Champions League place, although they do have at least two games in hand on all the top four.